Well, hello, it's Pastor Smith, and we are moving on here in our devotions to the exciting sequel to 1 Thessalonians, which is entitled 2 Thessalonians. And this one is interesting. Uh, it's a shorter letter, and it's a more specific letter. Uh, Paul, in part of 1 Thessalonians, uh, brings up this concept of, you know, wh- what will happen, you know, on the last day when Christ returns in judgment. Uh, it talks about, um, you know, how the dead will be raised and, and, and other things. Uh, but there seems to be uh, a misunderstanding that the Thessalonians had on this topic because Paul spends a, the majority of this letter talking about, um, you know, end times and, you um, judgment and you know what's going to happen when Christ returns uh, and so we we get into that a little bit here in the first 12 verses uh, well in in the first chapter that's the whole thing 12 verses it's a short one uh, so I, I want to read part of it here you know after Paul has his customary uh, nice greeting of encouragement he gets in here on uh, verse 5. So he, he's already been talking about uh, how acknowledging persecution and suffering that the, Thessalon, the Thessalonians have had. This is what he says. This is evidence of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be considered worthy of the kingdom of God, for which you are also suffering, since indeed God considers it just to repay with affliction those who afflict you, and to grant relief to you who are afflicted, as well as to us, When the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, inflicting vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus, they will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might. When he comes on that day to be glorified in his saints and to be marveled at among all who have believed, because our testimony to you was believed. To this end, we always pray for you, that our God may make you worthy of his calling and may fulfill every resolve for good and every work of faith by his power, so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, uh, a lot going on there. Paul just kind of comes out guns blazing talking about the judgment uh, that, that Christ will uh, execute here on the earth when he returns. Uh, but he's... This is definitely, Paul is um, making the Thessalonians aware uh, of a couple of things. Um, One, the suffering that they are enduring for the sake of Christ and the gospel, um, you know, Paul says elsewhere in Romans, he says, this suffering is not even worth comparing to the glory that they're going, going to experience one day in heaven. But he's also saying, I think, that the suffering that they're enduring is not worth comparing to that eternal suffering that those who reject Christ um, will face. And so he's not trying to really diminish the suffering that they're having, but he's trying to put it in perspective. You know, yeah, this life might be rough for a follower of Jesus in this life, uh, particularly for the Thessalonian Christians, uh, but it ain't nothing, you know, compared to to the eternal judgment and punishment for those who, who uh, just reject Christ. Uh, and his word. So he, he's saying that. I, I think it's a little bit of an encouragement too, though, because he points them forward to also the glory that they will, that they will have um, when Christ returns and ushers in eternal life for them. Uh, but again, he, this message is also, he, he includes you know, prayer that they're going to stand firm uh, because he wants them to be aware that, you know, this gospel is serious business. If, if, if you reject it, um, then your suffering will increase in eternity. Uh, so he's he's laying it out there. You know, um, Jesus is our good shepherd. He carries the lamb to his to his breast, uh, but he also comes in righteous judgment against his enemies. So Paul prays that the Thessalonians will remain uh, in the family of God, that they will remain true to that confession of faith uh, to the gospel that Paul gave to them. Originally, so the stakes get very high here right away in chapter one of this letter, and Paul will begin to talk even more because um, there was some confusion in the Thessalonians' minds about you know has has the last day come already you know uh, what's going on what's the timeline here so he he will explain more about that, um, but 
I pray that you will um, be blessed by this kind of challenging, heavy word of, of Paul today. Um, but my prayer for you and for all of us is that we will also remain true uh, to the word of God, trust in him through, through whatever suffering life may throw at us with the hope of eternal life that he will bring. So may God bless you here for today and for the rest of your week.